Hello everyone, welcome back. On today's episode, we're going to start building our admin panel. So we have the ability to actually create tags and actually attach them to our post so we can implement uh, the category filter. So let's get started, guys. For our admin panel, we're going to be using uh, Filament PHP. Now, I assume you have uh, some basic knowledge of Filament PHP. If you're not familiar, I will. I have a course on my channel on Filament. I just covered the very basics. That all. That's all you need to know. You don't need to be super uh, kind of advanced with Filament, but the basics is going to help you actually follow the videos a little bit easier. I'm still going to try to explain as much as I can, but this is after all a kind of a project based video, so I don't want the videos to be too long. So with that being said, let's get started, guys. Open up the Filament PHP website. I will have the link in the description as well, or you can just Google uh, Filament PHP documentation, and it should be the first link that pops up on Google. Click on get started. And also make sure at the top you are on version three. Sometimes if you're coming from Google, it might be a version two link. So once you're on there, uh, click the panel builder, scroll down, and under installation, there is a command, composer command. So copy the composer command, move over to your application, and paste it on your terminal. This should go ahead and actually require all the filament PHP files. And next up, you need to go ahead and copy this artisan command. And while this is happening, guys, we do need to have some sort of rules and permissions on this application. Now, uh, what I'm thinking about is having three roles. So we will have a member slash like user role, which is regular visitors and viewers or readers of the blog. Then we will have an editor role. So uh, the role of the editor is just to publish posts or create posts. And then we also have like an admin role. Okay. So admin can do anything. They can, admin can view all the users, can delete users, delete comments, things like that. Editor can only uh, publish post, uh, create comments, sorry, categories. Okay. So it's a, it's a kind of simpler role. So that's the goal uh, at the end of the course, by the end of the course. Now on today's video, we're not going to touch on roles yet. I will make a separate video tackling how to do that in filament. So now that the installation is done, let's paste the second uh, command as well. And that is done. Let's click. No, I already have it stored on my personal GitHub account. So now, now that that is gone, done, guys, we should be able to actually log in into filament. So go on your application, do slash admin. And if you're already logged in, you should automatically log in. If you're not, go ahead and log into using your Jetstream account. By default on a local development, any user can log in into Filament. On production, uh, basically none of your users can. So we do need to later on add some code. We'll do that on the rules and permissions video. For now, let's just go ahead and log in. And we can actually see the admin dashboard panel. Okay, let's move it to dark team. So now that we are here, guys, we need to create the resources for our category and post. So let's go ahead and do that. Open up the terminal again. Uh, let's expand it a little bit. So in order to create a resource, we need to type in PHP arts and make filament resource. And then the resource are basically our models. So the first one is going to be our category resource. So just type that in. And then we need another one for our post. Now, if you guys remember on our post table, I also added this soft deletes. Now, technically, this isn't required. The only reason I added it is because I want to teach you guys about soft deletes and also uh, how to actually work with them. So if you're not familiar, basically soft deletes adds a deleted add field on your table. And its rule is, as the name suggests, soft delete. Basically, you're kind of deleting things, but you're not showing them to the user. So technically, it's still a record on your database. You can always kind of bring it back in or restore it if you want. But once you have added this deleted add, it will stop being shown to users, right? So it's as if you have deleted it, but still have the option to always bring it back in, okay? So it's a useful feature. You can also kind of delete very old, deleted that field, soft deleted ones. So, uh, it's, and it's quite easy actually to work with them in filament. So in order to add the soft delete functionality, we need to add an additional argument of a uh, soft delete. Okay, so do dash dash soft delete. If you decided not to go with the soft delete on your migration, then ignore this last step. Hit enter. Now, one more thing we also need to do for soft deletes is we need to update our model. So at the top under uh, for your post model, go ahead and add a trait of soft deletes. The name is actually quite exactly identical to the soft delete argument. So now that we have done that, we actually will be able to use the soft delete functionality on filament. So let's go back. Let's do a quick reload. Now we should have a categories as well as a posts what you may call a resource page. So let's start off with categories and implement its pages first. So on the left, if you go under app directory, there should be a filament folder. And under it now, we should have a category resource. Now for our categories, we have four columns. If I, if you guys remember, so I'm going to go ahead and use a, a text input for all of them. So it's going to be our title field. Uh, we have, I believe, a slug. 
we have a text color and we also have a bg color okay and let me show you guys the migration so you guys can see so this is our migration we have these four i'll just add these now text color and bg color are nullable so i'll need to add that and also slug needs to be unique so let's add those uh i'll make these guys be nullable same for uh bg color now for title i'll make it be required uh, same for uh, slug for slug we also need to give it the slug sorry the unique validation rule and in order to ensure it will work on update pages as well we need to say ignore record i believe it is called let's see double check again ignore record yeah ignore record we need to set this to true all right now we can also add a few other validation rules such as like the max length so let's do that so the maximum basically characters for the title i'll set it to 150 and then i'll do the same thing for slug as well i'm not going to add a minimum at least not now maybe we can add that later on while we're at it why not let's do it let's do mean length of let's say one and then although it's kind of useless but still let's also add it over here so later on if you want to change this we can easily come over here and change the number so let's go back guys let's do a reload as you can see it is indeed working i can go ahead and edit these as well now once i try to edit we get this error message and this is because we are filament by default mass assigns and we ha don't have a fillable on our model so let's go ahead and open up the category model now one thing we can do guys in order to make life a little bit easier we can just disable uh, mass assignment because we are not really passing any unvalidated data to our models we could technically just go ahead and say uh, protected guarded guarded equals to an empty ray and this will go ahead and disable mass assignment for us and basically make things work now if you want to be a little bit more safe you can go ahead and actually set the fillable now, on a simple project like this or if you're just doing a portfolio project for yourself we can go ahead and just use guarded but if you want to have that extra layer of security we can go ahead and define these manually so i'm going to say a uh, title uh, slug and then we have a uh, text color and then bg color although we don't have anything sensitive on the category field that could potentially be changed but still let's add it here good practice and one more thing we have to do guys i would like to show you guys is how to actually automatically generate the slug once we edit it so right now if i type in the slug it would be useful if it was also automatically generated as we typed it in this is very easy to do with filament so let me show you guys how we can actually do this so let's go back we can go ahead on our title and i'll move these to a new line so you guys can see a little bit easier add a new method call and we can say after uh, state updated now, as the name suggests this will basically add a, like a callback you can pass it in the callback function it's like a hook and or an event listener basically it will call the method you pass in you can pass in an anonymous function to it it will call your function whenever the value of this title is changed right and again uh, filament uses library components in the background so basically whenever your title property changes it will call this a function that you pass in now this function does take a few uh, arguments so we need to define those as well so it takes a string argument of operation basically it will be if you're creating or editing and then it will take an state argument as a second argument so this is basically the current value of the title or the property on the live work component underneath that filament is using and the last but not least it has a set variable and i believe this is of type forms set i could be wrong we do have forms imported right we do so we can technically go ahead and use this as well it should be that way now vs squared is having some hard time here it's okay but i believe that is the right import so now what i can do guys let's go ahead and add this dump over here uh call and see when this method is called so we can actually get a better understanding of this after state updated so i'll cl click on create and now we get this uh, if you guys quickly side came in quick and went away let me make this dd so it actually stops the page work as you can see we are getting this dd right so and that's because i changed the value of the title now one thing we can do guys is because filament uses live or at the end we can go ahead and call this live method on our input which is basically like a property and same way as wire model live it will go ahead and update our title as we type in okay so let's go ahead and try again now if i type we are getting this very basic as you can see this method is called as we change the value so now that we have this we can actually go ahead and change the slug based on the value of the title and this is why the set variable is useful we can use set 
and pass basically as the first argument we can pass in what are what property we want to change which is the slug and then the second argument is going to be the value you want to change it to and for this one you can define your own slug uh, code for now just say test just so we can see if it's working so let's try again guys i'll come back i'll type something in and as you can see the slug value changed to test so we can use this to automatically generate the slug now laravel does have uh, a slug function for under the str helper or str facade so i'll just pass in the state and state is the current value of the title okay now vs code for some reason is struggling here let's go ahead and uh, import this i believe it's illuminate uh, support str all right so now that we have this i believe you're good to go so let's go ahead we don't actually need to reload because it's a library component i'm going to say hello world and again it is automatically generating this log for us now this does have one more issue guys usually on the edit page you probably don't want to change this log if you're changing the title because it will break any like backlinks you have or if you shared it on twitter or something like that you don't want to change this log just randomly so one thing we can do is we can do a simple check and use this operation variable over here i can just go ahead and actually uh, dd over here uh, operation and we can see what is going on actually i'll type something in and as you can see it's telling us edit right so you can use this variable to make sure uh, we don't enable it on edit page if i go to the create page and i type something in we get create right so i can use this variable to control whether or not we actually generate this log so i'm just going to add a super simple if statement and say if uh, operation is edit just return okay don't do anything and if you guys don't like these inline if statements i personally don't as well because it can sometimes be confusing i'll just have it be like that all right so now that we have this let's save it let's go back and now if i try to type in as you can see guys automatically generated on the create page and if you go to the edit page it is not updating it i think it makes a bit more sense to not do it on edit so you can manually edit it and i think that's it enough for the uh, form section so let's go ahead and also set up our uh, table for the categories so for this one exactly the same as above guys it's going to be text uh, column make title and then uh, it also needs to be sortable and also i make it be searchable okay so let's copy paste this for all of them so we have a uh, slug text color as well as bg color and i believe we are done with the category at least for now later on we might come back and add some additional information to it so now let's go ahead and actually work on our post which is the biggest one so uh, for the starters i'm going to copy the title and the slug because they ha we have the exact same thing on our posts so it should be easy to do <clears throat> so let's open up the post resource and i'll scroll up under the form guys now for the post resource because we do have a bit more columns guys i think it's better off if i change the layout or define the layout first so what i'll do is i add a section here and a section is basically like a card component or like a card element right so i'll make this one be main uh, content something like that and the section is basically like a grouping uh, input or grouping uh, container right similar to this form so it accepts a schema similar to this form that we have over here you can pass it in an array of inputs or fields and then i'll have another one i'll copy this actually and the second section i'll have it be like meta or like metadata okay maybe we put the image and some other stuff over here now let's see how it looks before we add anything now we have two table two uh cards now we can put these on the side if you guys would like so it's totally up to you if you do that or uh not okay so let's go ahead and start off with the main content so uh, obviously i have to copy these again i'll copy the title and the slug and i put them under main content did not copy it let's try again okay so that's going to be our uh, title now we do need to add import text input as well as i believe form set i'm not sure we do have forms the only thing i need to import is actually the str helper so it's going to be a support str <coughs> so now i believe this should work just fine let's just double check make sure we don't get any errors it is indeed working now i'm also going to make this one be a two column layout because i don't like this way of presentation 
So we can easily do that on our section and go ahead and call a method of columns and define how many columns should be, okay? And by doing that, now it's two columns. You can make it three as well if you guys would like. And next up, we need to also, let's open up actually our posts table. So the remaining columns are our image, uh, body, published at, and future data. So let's also add the body as well inside the post. Now for this one, we can go ahead and there are a few options, actually two options. If you go to the form builder by default, uh, Filament has a rich editor, which is like an HTML editor, and then there is a markdown editor. So you can use either of these. Now, if you're using the markdown editor, you need to then go ahead and convert it back to HTML when you're displaying it. For that reason, I'm going to go ahead and use the rich editor, okay? So let's say rich editor, uh, make, uh, blog, is that what I named it? Body, sorry. I don't know why I said blog, body, and then I'm going to also make it be required. <coughs> as well as, I think that's all. Now, one more thing we can do, guys, if you scroll down, you can also define, uh, if you want to do inline kind of on form file uploads, you can define the folder the files should be uploaded. So we can use this file attachment directory. Let's also do that because I do intend to upload files and I'll have it under posts, uh, I guess, images. Now we do need to be careful uh, because uh, Filament does not delete these if you delete your post. So we need to handle that deletion ourselves or use some other library to handle those file uploads. So I'll cover that later on in the course. For now, I'm just gonna go ahead and add that and that should get the job done. And if you wanna disable or enable different buttons, there is a section called toolbar buttons. You can go ahead and customize these if you guys would like. By default, I believe all of them are enabled so we don't need to worry about anything. Okay, let's do reload. It is now working. Now it's not full width, so in order to make it a full width, we can go ahead and add column span full. And I'll add this, move these to a new line, guys, so you can see a little bit easier because I am quite zoomed in on my screen for the video. All right, so now if I reload, uh, we have the title, we got the slug, and we got the body as well. And you can add whatever you like over here, okay? You can add images, you can uh, add headings, things like that. You can again upload images over here by clicking this, and it will go ahead and add them to the form, okay? Super simple stuff. We have headings, uh, links, all the most common things you would need uh, is available over here. All right, so after that, guys, we have our uh, metadata related stuff, which is going to be the image, the published at, and the featured at. So let's go ahead and define those as well. Under meta, I'll first add the image. So we can go ahead and say a file upload. And I'm going to say make image. Now we can also pass in a method of image to ensure it is kind of an image file uploaded. And then we need to also pass in a directory of where we want the images to be uploaded. And I'll add it under uh, post, <coughs> posts, uh, thumbnails. We can also have it be under images, but I like to have these to be under uh, separate folders. We can again, customize these later on. For now, I'm just adding it so we have something working. Uh, next up, we have uh, date time picker for our published at, as you can see over here. So we need to add that as well. I'll say make published at, and this one should be nullable. Again, if the post is not published, it's gonna be null, right? So that's the easiest way of uh, figuring out. So I'll add that over here. And the last but not least, we need a checkbox for our uh, future, okay? So I'll say make future. So let's save this, let's go back, do a quick reload. And now I believe we have all the core components that we need. Now for the images, we can also make this be a two column layout. Uh, but I'll I'll do that on a separate video, guys. I'm not going to focus too much on the cosmetic size of it. For the admin panel, we can do that on later episodes. For now, we're going to implement all the functionality and then customize the UI. So we have everything, guys. Let's try to save something. And similar to our category, it is telling us that fillable is not set, so we need to go ahead and set that as well. So let's open up our post model. And I'll copy the fillable from our category and move it over here. So we need to add an uh, image. Uh, body, we have published at and featured. So let's do published at as well as featured. And I believe we also need to add the user ID, which is basically the author of the post. And that should get, I, I think that should be all of it, okay? So now that we have those things, guys, uh, let's try to save again. Hopefully it fixes the issue. It is indeed. Now we are missing a few things. So we are missing the author and the categories on the post. So we already have the author relationship set up on our uh, post model. If you guys look over here, 
So we also need to do the same thing for our categories as well. So let's do it. Obviously, we have a many to many relationship between our post and category. This is the table for it, right? Category post. So we need to define that relationship in our model. So here I'm going to go ahead and say uh, categories. And for many to many relationship, we need to use a belongs to many. And this one is going to be a category. We don't need to pass in any column names or things like that. Uh, Laravel automatically will detect that because we are using the Laravel convention. So super easy uh, to work over here. So now in order to add that, we can do it under meta. Uh, why not? Later on, we can obviously move these things around. So let's go ahead over here. We can go ahead and use a select field, say make, author, and then for this to work for uh, one to many relationship, we can go ahead and say a relationship. And then we need to pass in the relationship function name, right? So here we have defined it as author, or you need to pass author. If you define it as user, you need to pass user. If you define it as, I don't know, uh, editor, you need to use that, okay? So this is based on the name of this function. I'll pass it over here. The second argument on the relationship is going to be what you want to display on the drop down menu. I'll say name. So I'll want to show the name of the author. And then I'll also make it be uh, searchable. And I think that's all we have to do. Okay. Let's go ahead. I'll also make it required. And that's all for the select. We'll copy this. And we need to do the exact same thing for our many to many relationship for categories as well. So I'm going to say uh, categories. Now for the relationship, obviously we need to also change this to the categories relationship. Now for categories, we don't have a name. So if I open up our category model, we have a title. We could have also used name here, but I'll have to go ahead and change this to title. I'll make it be searchable. Now for the required, we also, uh, I'll actually get rid of that because we may not have one. And then last but not least, because categories is a many to many relationship, we need to also add multiple okay so that's i believe all the core things we need guys let's do a reload let's see if everything is working now we have author and then we have some categories and i already have some of these attached i had manually added these so uh, i already have a few of these attached and i believe we added a bunch of categories already from our factories so uh, you can go ahead and create some categories and try to attach them to your posts and see what happens, okay? Let me add another one as well. Let me search. I'll say uh, A and I'll add this one. Let's click save and it is indeed working. Let's try to change the author. I, I'll say for G, do we have anything with G? Adam uh, Graham Jr. Let's add that. So this is working as well. The only thing remaining is going to be our table for the posts and I'll keep it super simple for now. We'll I'll again copy it from the category resource. Let's scroll down a little bit more. Uh, we need a title and a slug. So let's add them both here. We need to import as well, text column. So the if other things we need is going to be, what else do we need actually? I think we can also add the author. So here I'm gonna say uh, author.name. So that's you how you can add relationships here. If you have a, a one to many relationship, and then last but not least, we need a checkbox field. Where is it? Checkbox column, make, uh, future. And last but not least, we need another one for the date of published at. So I'm going to say a published at. In order to make a date, you can use a text column and then call a method of date on it. And you can also define the format if you guys would like. I'll say YMD, something like this. So let's do a reload. Let's see if it's working. Uh, it indeed seems to be working. And again, if you don't have a date here, that means it's not uh, published. We can also go ahead and show the image if you guys would like. We can say, uh, I believe image column is the name, make image. And let's do a quick reload and we should be able to see the image as well, just like that. So super simple stuff, guys. And I believe you're done with the basics of the admin panel. Now, I would like to go ahead and publish this post that I have added. I had added this myself manually, so it's not published. So let's go ahead and add it. Uh, I'll click on published at and I'll make it be <clears throat> like published maybe yesterday. So let's save that. And let's go back to our blog and see if you're able to actually find this article. I'll also change the title to Let's say a lot of all tutorial, a lot of all tutorial. Let's save it. So let's go to our blog page. 
and we already have a few from three hours ago so i'll have to search for it i'll search for laravel let's click search and it is indeed now working now our image is no longer working uh, so we do need to fix that and we also need to later on add our categories over here and also add the ability to filter by categories. So I'm going to leave all of those for the next episode, guys. The video already is very long. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and learned something new regarding filament, especially the uh, slug one, I think could be quite useful for you guys and you can use it for other things as well. So if you have any questions, you can ask me in the comment section below. And as always, I see you guys on the next episode. Have a great day. Bye.